Hey folks, you are most welcome to the amazing episode of Rising Beings that we call Rax Riches. And today we have an interesting guest who started his journey being an intern working for an Indian startup called Flexi for Us for absolutely free to becoming the director of their sales team and training, building the team of 40 plus sales people. So, dear guest, you are most welcome on the show. Thank you so much, Avita. Great to be here. Perfect. So, uh, let's uh, cut the things in the of the between and come to the point on directly over here. So, my first question to you over here is: Before we get started with your intro, the audience is super excited to know that how did you start as an intern? Okay. So, uh, my journey started with a very simple book. Uh, the financial uh, bestseller is that go that I read that book and uh, I got to know that uh, to become an entrepreneur you need to learn sales first and uh, that intrigued me and let me get on the path of learning sales so I got an opportunity at a very very good start of flexible to join their sales team because I had zero experience they offered me to work for free on commissions and uh, to learn sales. So that's how I start. Perfect. So coming short to the questions over here on the point that you started as an intern working for that a startup for absolutely free to becoming a, that sales director of the company. How did this happen? Can you please explain it to the audience? Okay. So uh, when I started the company, you know, it was uh, a startup and the systems processes of the sales department were also evolving. Mm -hmm. So, during the time I started, I used to... Uh, so, basically, I'll start with uh, my first month performance. So, in the very first one, when I joined, we launched the software. And uh, there was 15 people uh, working in the sales team at that point, that part of time. And uh, after the end of the promotion period, uh, we were all selling, we were all calling day in, day out. It was telephonic sales call. And uh, I remember I had sold roughly 27 units of that software. And uh, 27, 28 of those for the price point of $400. And uh, I used to be proud of it because that was the first time I was selling. And I'm like, look, roughly $12,000, $15,000 of sales I have done very first time when I have done sales. But when I saw the leaderboard, out of all the 15 people, the last need was mine. And I have always been a student who is, uh, you know, at the top of any class which I'm taking. So that hurted me a lot. I went to a senior of mine at that time. And since I told, just like I told the system processes, nothing was built. So the training processes or the identification of the problem, nothing was there to figure out what was wrong with my colleague's style of work wrong with my you know sales call which i'm doing and why i'm not at the number one or number three and why i'm number 15 i wanted that answer for the same so uh i started uh, figuring out on myself that where exactly i'm lagging okay so uh basically what happened was he one day people around me used to talk about, about cricket and they used to discuss okay this player has a batting ratio of this first this player has a uh, ratio of uh, hitting ports of this much and I thought for myself what if I uh, create a database or a number chart where I can understand just like we saw we see cricket right that this player has this ratio for bowling this ratio for batting things like that I can create the same for a sales team member okay, let's say there are 15 people in the sales team and we have the data this person has called this much, this person's using the issue this much, and more detailed stuff on what exactly should happen during sales and to review it and to identify what and where things are going wrong and where things are going right and for the comparison sheet. And uh, I was just an intern at that time, but this idea hit me. And after uh, the promotion was over, and uh, I remember sitting for roughly 15 to 20 days, not enjoying at all that promotion is over. And, just going all in day and night and creating a data sheet to identify those numbers. And uh, after 10, 15 days of day and night work, I figured out a way to create that data. 
and uh, basically i calculated how many calls i made how many calls uh, the top performer made at individually basis every 15 people make how many hours of calls they have made how many connected calls they have made how many minutes they are on an average on a single call uh, what is exactly the per hour ratio they are uh, bringing in like the per hour value of money they are bringing in for the company and uh, a lot of detailed stuff this i am just giving you a gist of it and based on that i was able to figure out where i was lacking and uh, for the next 60 days 90 days i worked my ass off and improve on those pointers and uh, you know uh, during that 6 month period later on i closed roughly about 150000 dollars in individual sales but just figuring out what was wrong with me Mm-hmm. and then trying to improve every single aspect so this is how it start that's really interesting i really wondered when you mentioned that there was a conversation going on about the cricket and they were yeah. talking about some uh, numbers ratios yeah. and that's where yeah. you got your idea so yeah. that's really interesting to sift from what is lagging in you and learning from from a complete different uh, you know i would say feel to yeah. into your sales so i completely understand the journey must have been super amazing so would you like to share with the audience that what are the changes that you exactly met during your sales calls that you felt that this wasn't there at the first place but you changed okay. later on Okay, okay, okay. So uh, I'll say what I just discovered about the, the the data part of it. It's not something which is new. It's already happening from years, hundreds of years. But I was unaware of it because I I went to a startup and I, and we were figuring out things from the scratch. So we were also not aware that these kind of things already exist. Once I created that, we I improved on it, and you know I helped other team members improve on it. that's when we started to ask other people in other companies other founders other reach out to other uh, sales people from other companies and understand how they track their metrics and they realize okay they do do the same but i initiating was the one who thought that i discovered it uh, so completely new with it but uh, uh, we realized that this is something that is a common way of uh, doing things and uh, in sales you need to know the stats the numbers the data so that is how it started so coming back to your question uh, what exactly was wrong with me so when i dragged the, the top performer and the 15th ranker me i was able to track that that guy literally called 1000 more calls dialed 1000 more calls than what i did i dialed somewhere between 1800 calls in that 21 day promotion period and that guy dialed roughly around 28 to 3000 calls so um, then i track ki okay if he is calling 1000 more people or 1200 more people he might be doing a lot of four hours of calling but there are limited hours i was also working for 10 hours a day he was also working for 10 hours a day how come he is able to make more calls and uh, i got to know that i did roughly about 150 hours of calling and he did 160 just giving you a vague number for clear understanding so i did 150 he didn't 160 that's a gap of just 10 hours in a period of 21 days so it is highly achievable then how come i am short of 1200 calls then i did deep into data and figure out some new metrics to understand that and i calculated a data that is called a average minute spent on call so what i did was i mean i calculated let's say if i am doing 1000 calls mm-hmm. and i spent as of the around 100 hours on calls on that 1000 calls then it it shows that roughly i am spending we are going to be able to calculate whatever the batch is in x amount of time by dividing both of them i am able to spend it one call on an average making sense right? right so what i calculated was let's say my average is 10 minutes on every single call and that source guy metric was 4 minute on a single call and from that i realized he what is happening was since i have a habit of speaking too much or over explaining things or over educating people what i was doing on a call is let's say the duration of the call was this much and 
the call could have cut down and I could have moved to the next call during this period only. But since I lack the ability to not, you know, feel emotional about uh, the giving too much education on the call to people and uh, having this and to follow the script, I went too much on the emotion side and speak for too long and uh, give too much education to that guy which was not required on the scenes call. So that would have time, I could have cut the call here, which is required and move to the sex call, second call and move to the third call and move to the fourth call during that same period of time. So I was making less amount of dials in the same amount of time by giving more time to unrequired people. If this is making sense to you. That was yes. number one lack. That was number one lack. And then I uh, asked myself and figured out from my seniors and other colleagues that why, what do you think in my call? Why exactly I'm not able to identify when to cut the call? And this, and then I identified what they called us qualification skills. I was not able to qualify people who to give more time to, who to not give more time. So basically, I was giving more time to unqualified people was the problem in a single statement. Then I researched online, met with more salespeople from other company and, you know, worked hard on improving that qualification skill. Who to qualify, who not to qualify. I studied who, those, who are the people who are getting converted. What are their traits? What are their persona? What are their age? What are their income? What exactly are the metrics that is working in anybody's industry? They will be able to predict this out. Key. Who are the people who are getting converted and how to qualify them? So it, I learned that it is not not only the qualification, not only the sales skill that determine how much sell, sales you are making. It is also the qualification skill based on the kind of product we were selling. It's important for us to determine how much a person will sell. And after that period of time, once I cracked it. I was able to see people from a different lens. I was able to see amazing closer making less amount of sale and very basic closer make more amount of sale. And I was able to crack with their data that, okay, if a person A who is an amazing closer and is making 10 closes a month, let's say for example, and a person who is 50% skilled in sales from that guy but is making 20 sales a month, just double of it, why is that? Because that guy was not making qualified, not talking to qualified people enough. He was giving more time to less qualified people. In fact, he's having more selling skill. That too will make him make more less sales than the other guy who's having half the ability but is doing more sales. So at that time, the system that we were having in the company requires a salesperson to have both. Number one, qualification skill. Who to talk to, how much to talk to. Number two, closing. So that was my uh, you know, figuring part or wake up call. And from data, I figured it out myself and I uh, basically improved myself and that and other 15 people improve. And then I created a whole document, SOP processes on how to qualify people and how to close those calls and what are the numbers, metrics, averages in our company and our department. And then I gave and mailed that to our founder and that uh, helped me in my journey from being a uh, uh, in turn, working for free to becoming the sales operation director of the company and building a sales team of 40 people and teaching them how to sell. All right. So here there there have been a lot of questions that have been raised in my mind, but you yeah. really answered them so well. Uh, let me just uh, share that word over this question because uh, keeping it in the mind that you started as an intern and trying to understand that what are the mistakes that you were committing, like you were uh, communicating with law of disqualified i would say in seals unqualified not disqualified unqualified Sorry, not ready yet yeah. unqualified needs i would say that okay. and then you figured out that you also have to communicate with you do not have to over educate the people okay right correct perfect so uh see uh i talked to a lot of uh ceos of the company but you, I believe, are the first person whom I am interviewing who is the director of sales head, right? So that, that's what I can say. So communicating with a sales head of, an, of a startup, I would love to know what are the common mistakes about the sales people they commit during the sales call? Okay, so that's an interesting question. So, uh, in the last couple of months, I have taken a lot of interviews that are fairly around uh, six 
hundred six fifty interviews for sales team position, BDAs and uh, managerial positions. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I have understood a lot of people from a different industry, from different companies. And how exactly uh, they are selling it, what they are lacking. Also, while running a team of forty people, I have understood sitting with them what their flaws are and where they are lacking. So since now, at my time when I joined the company, the startup, there was no proper, uh, you know, data-driven tracking on where exactly a person is going wrong and how to give feedback to that person and no proper processes to do that. Since I have built that myself and. Uh, I was able to track where a person is lagging and there are three, four metrics that I usually track. So I'll give you a basic example. So the key metric that I ask all my team members to have any time with them. Number one is per hour value, per hour sale. Meaning how many hours you are taking to close one sale on the phone call. If you are making, other than if you are making 100 hours of calls in a month and you're closing 10 sales, which means for every sale, you are giving 10 hours of calling. Calling can include you being on the call, speaking, you being on the call, trying to make calls, everything. It's basically the work hours on the call that you're spending, not the connected hours while speaking to the call. So let's say you spend 100 hours dialing a person, uh, you hit 10 sales, it's 10 hours per sale. If you hit 20 sales, you this 5 hours per sale. So on an average in our company, we brought that number down to four, three and a half, four hours on an average. On an average. There were people who are making sales within one and a half hours. There are people who are doing at five hours, but on an average, it comes down to three and a half, four hours on an average. So that was the benchmark for everyone. So anyone who came to me saying uh, that I'm not able to improve, I just asked how much hour it is taking for you to make one sale. First answer that. Second was was very basic conversion ratio, which I believe everyone here does that and everybody track that. That's a very a basic metric. How much leads are you been given to you and how many people you are able to convert? What is the conversion percentage is what percent you are able to convert? So couple of metrics like also how much money you are bringing per hour. So let's say if you are uh, selling four hundred dollar product. And you are selling 10 of those, you are bringing $4,000 uh, a month in your sales revenue. And if you are doing 100, 100 hours of calling, which means 4000 divided by $140 an hour is your hourly value as a salesperson. So these kind of metrics we used to track and we used to reward people on the basis of those key, if you are able to improve those metrics. So these are the common three that are top of my mind. All right. So, uh, what I can see over here or that people have to understand their data. The number one thing. Correct. Right. So what, what other things that you would like to guide the audience? Because what I feel that the audience who are into, they are entrepreneurs, business owners. So they would love to get more insights about the C. Okay, so coming back to the original question that you asked. So number one, you might have understood is having your uh, basic KPIs in top of your mind and tracking your data is the number one mistake every salesperson makes. And I believe not only the salesperson, the sales managers or the sales team leaders or some cases sales head director or even the startup people make by not tracking the data once they are starting out. So the very first thing a salesperson as an individual should do as well is to know their numbers. So I highly recommend everyone to track. And in fact, uh, I'll share with your audience a uh, link to a sheet and I'll share, show it to you after some time uh, on how to track it so that it becomes feasible and easy for them to track their own numbers in case somebody says, okay, I would not have that data driven mind on which number to track and I'm not that good at numbers. So help me. So I'll give that for sure to your audience. So number one is tracking the data. Number two, I feel with another is having conviction over your product. The product I saw a lot of people uh, going into sales and applying for jobs here and there, and uh, not being able to sell a lot and then struggling in sales. I feel that is because they don't have conviction over the product. I I let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. uh, according to you. 
I'll give you a situation. There are two people. Uh, number one is a an, an person named John, and number two is a person named uh, person B. So let's say John is very, 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 very awesome at knowing the products. He is being in the journey of building the product. He knows A to Z everything about the product. And uh, you know, when it comes to even trading the sales state regarding the product. John is always there to support the team and without John, the people cannot understand what the product does and to gain insight, they have to always refer to John. John is the go-to guy when it comes to product. Every single thing he knows about the product. But mm. he he is zero when it comes to people skill, when it comes to selling skill, when it comes to understanding and understanding the customer or talking to people. The second person, person B, is somebody who is on a scale of 1 to 10, just 1 on the logic of product and he knows just one about the product and the rest nine he know nothing okay and uh, he is 10 on 10 when it comes to selling when it comes to speaking when it comes to uh, understanding people's when it comes to uh, you know identifying with the root problems of people and just giving them the solution and selling them basically who do you think according to you will sell more john or uh, person b i feed the person b Okay, and why is that? Uh, because he is having the conviction at what you mentioned that he is able to communicate uh, exactly about the product because uh, the John also has the knowledge but he lacks when it comes to uh, communicate with people about the product. Like he feels less uh, confident. Correct. Okay. That's, that's one part of it. So uh, basically, the point is, when it comes to seeing it, it's not only about the product. It's about the customer. It's not about the product. It's about understanding the prospect which is coming to you more than even you understand the product. Because what product does can be different sometimes than why the prospect want to use the product. So the reason why someone is buying can be very different than why you have created the product. So you have to understand why they want to use it and whether it is going to help them or not. And then sell to them if they need it and you feel that it will be beneficial for them. So the difference uh, or mistake I will say that people make is or the companies also make this mistake. I've seen a lot of startups teaching their people just about the product. And then when they go on the call, they talk about the product, not the prospect's need. So that's a very big no-no when it comes to, you know, selling. So uh, again, it all matters. Number one is you having a good communication skill and uh, you knowing how to sell is important rather than doing the product. And also when you are choosing the product, the main topic which I started, you need to have conviction over what you are selling. I have seen people who are selling things without knowing anything about sales because they believe that this shit works. Whatever I am giving to people will help them. And then the, the belief is so deep within them that they feel that I am responsible to give this to people and I want people to use it because this is something so good. So uh, when you are hiring for sales and when you are choosing a company, if you are working in sales, so choose a product which you believe in or which you will use it for yourself and you feel that works because otherwise you won't be able to sell and you won't be able to figure it out. No matter how much you track your data, a different part of sales is also having the conviction over the product. So conviction can be developed by seeing a lot of success stories. Conviction can be seen by a lot of seeing a lot of people who are doing good with the product, meeting them physically, meeting them on the call, meeting them on Zoom meetings, seeing how exactly they impacted them and understanding what you're doing is a good cause and what product you're providing is something that is changing people's lives or maybe impacting it in some way or the other whatever that is but having the conviction over the product is something i feel the sales team member or sales people individually don't train themselves on and then they struggle selling because deep down they don't believe what they are selling is right and they feel by selling somebody they are you know misleading someone that can be true if the product is not good. So choosing the product which you are selling wisely 
and having the conviction over what you sell works and help people and have people who have got results from them is very important. So the second one which I will mention is for sure having conviction over the product. A lot of salespeople do this mistake by choosing product they don't have conviction upon and even keep selling them for years and don't they won't be able to figure out why my sales are. So right. that's another one. Another one, if I can say, is a lot of sales people don't have listening skills. See, right now at this podcast, I am speaking roughly about 80% of the time because uh, you have asked me and I have to answer you. But when I am on the sales call, I am not the person speaking. I am the person who is listening, just like you are right now. So the point of the goal is here, when you are on a sales call, it's not about you telling every feature about your product. It's about understanding what the customer needs. So if you are on the call for 10 minutes, roughly about 8 minutes should be the customer speaking and only 2 minutes when you are speaking. So 80% of the time, you should be just listening to the customer, asking questions, then another question, then another question. Till the time you have enough data or enough information to understand stand in your gut in your mind that is it something which the customer want or not and if they want it how can i relate their needs with what the product does in a way that makes them feel that okay this is something that that is solving my problem so that is that is one thing people just go on the call because it's from the roots that they are being trained on the product not on the prospect all right. So it comes down to training the sales team members as well. But if you are a salesperson who's listening to this, understand if you are being trained on the product or you are being trained on the prospect. So be trained on the prospect and improve the selling skill in understanding the prospect. So you will be able to sell the product. I, I really so like that's another one. I really liked, uh, sorry to interrupt you. I really like this uh, one liner that you mentioned be trained on the prospect. Please carry on. Yeah. So uh, the same thing which I just told, I, I learned while I was learning it from a very renowned entrepreneur, Alex Hermes. So this, I just want to give that credit to. So another thing which I feel that people do wrong is, uh, you know, so, show very high excitement on the call. Uh, okay. Hi, everyone. how exactly are you doing today? Uh, how's the weather in your city? So, you know, these kind of things you usually are something which people have seen or heard or you know that triggers them okay there is something fishy here or so they you know uh, basically i've been on the sales call we all have so it just uh, gives a red alert in our mind that some something someone is going to forcefully sell me something here. so just having a general conversation a general tone which you are having right now uh, is important it's just necessary if you're calling somebody okay hi i've been how exactly are you doing today? You can say, uh, just be in a normal room. Okay, hello. Is this other than I will the man calling from XYZ company and whatever, whatever. But the tone should be in a gentle tone. Like you don't give a shit. So the prospect don't be in a red alert that something fishy is going on. Just be a normal conversation, just like we are having. Right now. So, so that's a number one, number three or four mistake, whatever the count. Three one. Another yeah, another very, very, very important mistake, which I see 90% of my people, my own team make a lot of time, and which I have to remind them again and again to not make, is making assumptions. Making assumptions about why the product, why the prospect want to buy, making assumption on why they don't want to buy, making assumption on what their need is. So I'll tell you uh, one on one I did with a team member of mine. And I sat with him for an hour and we listened to a 25-minute sales call he has done with him. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, I asked him, so over a period of time, for the 25 minutes of the sales call, 22 minutes, my team member was speaking and just 2-3 minutes, that prospect was speaking. So, totally vice versa on what should be happening. So, I asked my team member, okay, tell me what are the five needs which the prospect has told you. He said the prospect has told me he want to do business, the prospect has told me this, the prospect has told me that. I said, no. Tell me 
what are the five deeds the prospect has told you himself from his mouth that okay i mean and then these are my deed number 1 these are my deed number 2 these are my deed number 3 4 and 5 he said he has not told me that i said exactly what you are identifying is what you felt is the need that is not something that the prospect has told is his or her need. so what your job is to fucking listen and ask good question and identify the needs and then label it to them that okay so this is your basic problem right now right okay then uh, ask another question and then identify and ask them what exactly their another need is so identifying their need which they have spoken from their own mouth is very important and not just assuming that okay if they have came to came on call with us and we are someone who help with softwares who help businesses which means they might be having some problem of course they have but have they told you that have they uh, told you that this person is my problem so people assuming what the problem is and at the end of the call what happens when we are sitting the close that guy used to close him on the assumed problem looks on needs he thought that prospect had and that is why he lost the sale because the prospect is like no this is not a problem in his head and he's like okay this guy don't know what he's talking about and let's just skip the part and then he goes it right. and this ever happened to you uh, it so, happened a lot too yeah so what basically happened guys that since you have not known the precise needs the prospect have and you have based on your experience assumed their needs and then closed on your assumed needs the sale is not made because that's not their precise needs all right is it making sense it is making sense and also it is raising a question yeah. in my i would yeah. love to break it down uh, you yeah. mentioned asking the right question asking the good question can you please uh, tell the audience that what are the differences between the good question and bad question while a sales person is communicating or sales call to a need okay so i i can not tell everything about this because it totally differ from industry to industry right but i'll give you a very basic uh, formula for it mm-hmm. what a good question is and what a bad question is okay. so this is something you have to do while speaking to the prospect a lot of time and then you have to systematize it but the sense you only have to do it with all your company has to give it to you if you are for being a company or if you are a startup founder you only have to go on a call with hundreds of people and then figure out what they are giving it to you and based on that you frame the script so it's a long term process i cannot just give you and throw you the question but i give you the formula so let me ask you this abin what's your name my name is abinandan okay now when i ask you what's your name you gave me a one word answer that's your name okay mm-hmm. now let me ask you abinandan Who exactly came up with your name? Can you please share what's the story behind your name? Ah, uh, it it was my mom who uh, thought out giving some unique name to me so that I stand out uh, when I grow up. So that is the basic idea that my mom had. Uh, she just uh, gave me this name. Okay, so what's your name mean basically? Ah, uh, it's just uh, the name of. Abhinandan is like uh, welcoming. Like in in a general word, we call it welcome. And I'm like, mm-hmm. so I feel that's a good name. Okay, for sure it is, ma'am. So, are you able to justify and acknowledge the difference here? When I'm asking you a close-ended question, close-ended question is basically a question which have a one-word answer or a yes or no answer. Are you good today, Abhinandan? What will you say? Yes, no. Yes, that's it. I am fine. Whatever, but you give a one word close answer, and I am forced to think again, and I am forced to speak more. But when I am asking you a question, just by slighting it a bit and asking you an open ended question, which is forcing you to think and forcing you to answer for a long period of time, is what the basic idea is. When I asked you what's your name, what did you do? A bit. When I asked you, can you share the story behind? the question remains similar to an extent but it is giving a pressure on you to answer and to think and to create and to give more information about you so that i can 
keep writing whatever i think is required for me to understand about the prospect so the idea is to ask the first open ended question which a person will answer in a paragraph i don't i don't want a one word answer so a question should be open ended i ask you a question i got a paragraph i keep writing the information which i want on my notepad i ask you the second question you gave a paragraph third question paragraph fourth question paragraph till the time i have not enough information to understand all your needs everything about the prospect i keep on asking the question and just fucking shut up and listen to their paragraphical answer just like i just said and at the end of it i will have ready with me all the needs all the information about the prospect so that i can fit it with the need and the product and then close it all right so there is one thing that what i felt and uh, i felt that audience would also know that you mentioned that let the prospect be forced to think okay and speak in paragraph okay all right perfect so that could be a good question that we can ask and i believe that you have given us a general example just to understand what a good question looks like not about any of the industries of uh, sales question yeah. interesting so please continue with your uh, sharing some of the pointers regarding the common mistakes that people okay so i feel another common mistake that a lot of people make is not following the script you know just got an experience on how to ask a question how which question to ask so this the person in the company or the founder who is listening to this or someone who is want to create a script or understand if somebody has given you a script it has a meaning they have had hundreds of calls before giving it to you or if not thousands before giving it to you they have seen every single objection they have seen every single need of the prospect every single behavior of the prospect and then they have came up with that script the way the question is asked and in the sequence the question is asked is way too important it seems i just gave you the example of asking your need and then asking you the story of your need. let's say if somebody is doing a webinar let's say when then you came to a webinar of mine and i'm calling you to pitch you and then i i i asked you okay abhinandan you attended the webinar how was it all right so i would say it was good i i could answer two questions like uh, two things okay it was yeah. good and i can go on explaining how good it was no 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 i asked you how was it then what would you answer okay so i will say yeah it was good now i'm asking you abhinandan can you share why exactly you were there or and continue to explain the story there i will you give me the paragraph side right and from there i will be able to fetch the needs of the prospect this is making sense that is why following the script is way too important a lot of people came up with their own their own things their own questions their own that's completely fine once you know and understand the baseline script of it so basically what the script is the skeleton of seeds you have to pour the soul the muscle the nervous system every single the body part of it with your personality that is for sure but not changing the skeleton of it. we cannot change the skeleton of our body so having the base skeleton fit and then adding your flavor of it that is completely fine that is even required for it. not every sales people not every sales person will sell with the same manner but not changing the skeleton is a common mistake or common uh, thing which i see a lot of people do a lot of yeah every people do this so they should not do it they should follow the script is the another thing which i want to share all right so uh, there is again a question in my mind and i would not to bring it yeah. on you mentioned that uh, there was a pointer that you made it people the sales people assume what is a need and just you mentioned that when you ask questions then you figure out the needs of the particular prospect so can and not only figure out everything they themselves tell you what their fucking need is 
So it's not an assumption anymore. They have told you precisely what they want. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, what could be the difference between assuming and figuring out from a prospect? What could be the difference? The difference is simple. At the end of it, let's say for example, Abhinand, I ask you, okay, okay, what exactly is your hobby? What else exactly is my hobby? What are some of your hobbies that you do beside podcasts and beside other things? What exactly are your hobbies? Hobbies is just a uh, of reading books and educating okay. myself and upgrading my knowledge. Okay. Upgrading your knowledge as upgrading my knowledge uh, as such, like uh, listening to the people who are at top where I want to be. So that's how I feel that uh, upgrading it. Okay. Who do you listen to? Uh, Who are the top five people basically you listen to every day and you follow along? I won't say every day, but uh, there there are some business gurus whom I listen to and there are some people who talk about self-development. Like uh, I would like to take the name like also there is a guy is just mm-hmm. amazing. When he speaks, I, I feel super interesting. Like, okay, I'm on cold. And then I sometimes listen to Jeremy Minor. There is a guy, then Grant Cardon, and then mm-hmm. the other guy like Alex Almoji, then Chris too. So there are people like this. Um, I go okay. to listen to and I try to understand. And why do you listen to business groups? Uh, I feel that somehow. Somewhere or the other, I have, I would start my business and I will do it. So I need to have that idea that what it takes to do the business, what are the mistakes one commits and what are the pros and cons about the business, everything. Okay. And why do you follow Jeremy Miner? Uh, Jeremy Miner is, is into sales. So what I feel that people lack is um, in sales that's what we are talking about today correct and why do you follow Grand Cardin Grand Cardin what what I see is that he is a guy who came from nothing and now has built a billion dollar company so precisely mm-hmm. I mean to say that somewhere or the other I also do the exactly same that he has done uh, can you elaborate on to the exactly same on what he has what is exactly same is like some someday I would like to uh, become a billionaire and uh, I see that he has done it uh, coming from I would say a average family. Hmm. Okay, makes sense. Aman. Can you also share something about Alex? Like why you listen to that? Guy? Ah, I feel that guy is super interesting. Uh, the idea that I like about him is he kept on trying about mm-hmm. uh, the thing. And also I like his saying that uh, when you keep on doing the things without uh, getting the results that you wait in short term to get and you wait for it and you still keep on doing without getting any result that we call uh, delayed gratification then you will be rewarded more for what you have done. Okay. And how does that relate to you? Like, how exactly you relate to that? Uh, so, that's a great question that you have asked over here. Uh, since I am into the podcasting, so the growth is no, but what I have to do is I need to continue doing this so that I know that I have to make it to the top one person absolutely one day but it is not going to happen overnight I need to continue doing this and uh, I strongly believe that it is going to be in the top one person absolutely one day and I'm going to make business or okay makes sense okay so that's enough of my question and you can count that part as a sales call as well that was me understanding the prospect, which is your precise needs. I'll tell you, I've written all of them down. And can you can you notice that 90% of the time you were speaking? 
Right. But I was asking the question. Right. And you were giving me paragraphs. Right. Right. And you were giving me very deep, insightful need of yours, which you might have not given in the podcast because you have invited people to speak, not to ask questions. Right. So I am sure this might be one of those podcasts when you are being asked the questions in your own podcast. Right. I I found a kind of people like uh, just to three to four people who ask some questions. You are the one of them. Yeah. So basically, I mean, let's say when I saw you, when I see your profile, I feel that this person is someone who is uh, into podcasting. He interviews a lot of people. He interviews successful people. Okay, that is my assumption of it. You might you might be doing it as a business. You want to do podcast, or you are doing it professionally, not professionally. I don't know that. But a basic assumption from your profile, from how we met, from how we discussed, is basically you are into podcasting, and for some reason or the other, you want to help people. These are some of the assumption I might have while speaking to you, and while speaking to you in this podcast, I might also have an assumption that. Okay, you are interested in sales. That's why you have asked to come here to speak about sales. All of these are things which I have assumed on my end. Not the prospect have told me on his end. I'll tell you what the prospect have told me till now. The prospect is following business gurus because somewhere the prospect want to start his business. So he might have an idea on what it takes to build a business, which means he has a need. which he has spoken from his own mouth and he is following people who are doing good who have been there very one of the so which means he has a deep need to understand where the business is and where how business is done how business is function this is something which he has told that's need number 1 which i was able to fetch need number 2 was he want to learn sales somewhere or the other you feel that you want to improve on sales number 3 which i got was Since you shared, you relate the story of Grand Cardone coming from an average family. So that 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 is a pointer which I have written in bold. So you have written that he comes from an average family, and someday you also would like to become a billionaire from nothing, just like him. Which means you have a deep need or deep emotions towards becoming a billionaire or whatever some kind or doing some crazy shit coming from a humble background. Another thing you told was delayed gratification. That also tell me that you are doing a lot of things right now which are not working out in some way or the other, and you are listening to that person. They are listening to Alex basically to keep on just going and keep on trying, keep on figuring things out. Which means you have deep pain. Also, if we provide all of your needs into a product customized for your precise needs and relate it to that, and we can help you, we will be able to get close to it. So let's say also one more thing, you want to be in the top one percent, and you are following those people, and you are being in those people surrounding, and you are understanding of those people. So even then, just hypothetical situation. Let's say for example, I have I know people who are doing world's best podcast, and uh, they are making millions of dollars from it. Let's say to be precise, ten billion dollar a year of revenue from doing podcast. If that person can precisely work with you and help you figure out how to monetize your podcast, how to create your sales team, how to optimize processes, how to scale from scratch, even if you have no money to scale on ads and other ways, and don't, and I can help you even if you have zero experience. Would you be interested to learn from a person like that? Okay, and in case it requires an investment, which for sure it is, because the person has, for sure, the support to ask for it. I, I, would you be interested in it? I would be interested. Okay, what is the amount you would be ready to invest from from such a guy? All right. So what I feel is that uh, I need to see that uh, how much I can invest. No, no. Yeah, yeah, that is one. Just give me a number, whatever number. Just a hypothetical situation. Okay, so I can go ahead with two thousand dollars. Okay, and if if that means two thousand dollars, if I'll just send you the payment processes right now, we will be able to close that two thousand dollar right away within ten seconds. Ah, uh, 
Of course, I can do that. Yeah. So, what do you think just happened during that last ten minutes we have spoken? I asked you question on your needs. For example, this could have been a podcaster who is helping other people to create a podcast and business around it. These are the kind of question could have been asked to identify the paragraphs and facts that needs of the prospect and then relate it with the needs and the views. And you yourself is. Want to pay me two thousand dollars? I even don't have the product right now. So this is this is basically it. The this is a difference between asking the questions, following the script, and not following the script. Because otherwise, I am just assuming that you want to do podcast, and I just don't know anything about it. What I, what else to do? So the question which you ask, the answer is simple: that when you are assuming, you are selling what you feel. The prospect wants when you are asking, you are fucking selling them what precisely they want, they need, and then you will make a sale. You are close, right? That's it. So here, what you just said is that you asked me the questions, and I gave you the answers on the on that page. So you figured out what are my needs instead of you assuming yourself that what could be mine. Correct. Perfect. All right. So it does make a lot of sense. And uh, to the guys who are listening over here in the audience, this really was interestingly amazing. And whatever I spoke, I spoke my heart out. And uh, there was nothing fake, nothing scripted. It all was like impromptu over here. So I really enjoyed this uh, conversation over here. I'll send you. I'll send you the link for two thousand dollars, bro. Don't <laughs> break. <laughs> Perfect. So uh, I completely say that uh, speaking is, uh, you know, easy and doing is a uh, little, you know, I would say challenging. But still, uh, the people like you do it so well. So that's so amazing. So would you like to like, uh, are the pointers that you were mentioning done or you still have? A couple of them? Yeah, it's precisely done. I'll just add uh, the conclusion. That uh, you know, usually the 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 mistake that people also make is not tracking their data on a weekly basis. If you are tracking your data, if you are understanding what you are doing wrong on the call, and you are able to track and compare it with the people who are doing good on a weekly basis, you are far, far, far ahead from all the average people who are not doing it. Trust me on this, Abhinav. Then you will be like the killer people. In a couple of months, if you start tracking your data on a weekly basis and start comparing from the top performers, and if you are the top performer, try to improve it on a regular basis, every part of it, and trust me, it works just like magic, just like magic. All right. So uh, I would like to ask: Is there any way uh, to learn how to track your data of yeah, you? Yeah. So basically, I just told you uh, that I'll I'll give a sheet, a simple basic. Basic Google Sheet uh, from which a person can calculate. I'll share the screen with you right now. I've created just one for you. So, okay. uh, is it visible to you? It is. It is. Yeah. So, uh, basically, in this sheet, you can put in your data, and then you will be able to calculate what precisely your numbers are. Uh, it is precisely for the number of calls you are making. But if you are doing a Zoom meeting, you can alter it for yourself and change it into meetings. Then number of calls so let's say for example this is for my this is weekly traffic so week week one uh on every day how much my performance is happening you can write down your leads to full converge you can write down basically uh on your stats how much sale are you making how much reserve sale are you making what is the price point of the product what is the total revenue uh you have made and I have put in some formulas and all of the sheet as well, and you will be able to calculate uh, what's wrong and you know what's happening good here. I have written an example as well so that a person can understand. Let's say I have uh, written your name here for 11th May tracking, and then your name for 11th June tracking. And I have also written a name of a person named John on 11th of June. So basically, this is your one to one from 11th May to 11th June tracking. Okay. So you will be able to see that on 11th May, 
the conversion percentage of Abhinandan is 0.75 but on 11 June it is 1.75 the leads per full sale which means how many leads it is requiring for you to make one sale earlier if I give you 133 leads you will make one sale now if I give you 57 leads you will make one sale Okay, this is the improvement part. But okay. how exactly you will be able to track? But John is able to do 250 leads. From 250 leads, John is making just one sale. And the conversion is just 0.4. So now they are able, they can be calculated and they can be figuring out yes. what exactly they are going wrong. As you are able to see, it is taking 6.6 .6 hours for 11th May Avinandan to close one sale. Mm -hmm. Now it is taking 4 hours. For Abhinandan to close one sale. For John, it is 17 and a half hours to make one sale. Okay. Which means which means they they, they are doing something wrong on the call. And based on this sheet, based on the data, they will be able to figure out what precisely they are doing wrong. I won't go into the deep analysis of the sheet, but based on this sheet, they will be able to calculate their how many hours they are. Doing. If they are doing a Zoom meeting, they will be able to track how many hours they have spent on the meeting or how many meetings they have done. So how many meetings to one sale, how many meeting hours to one sale, the concept remains the same. And then understand what exactly you are doing wrong by comparing your data with different And then identifying what is wrong and then fixing it. Do oh this God. every week will help anybody prove their numbers like everything within a month. On oh that's it. Perfect. So basically what you telling over your people in that uh, sheet that you have already explained and now you are showing it on the Excel sheet that how it is being done. The number of calls that you uh, people met and uh, they also worked on their uh, qualifying ability. Okay. Right. Perfect. So I feel that you are completely done with sharing those uh, pointers with the audience about the common mistakes that people come in. Yeah. Perfect. So, uh, now since we are moving towards the, you know, uh, end of the podcast, so I would love to ask some interesting questions over here. How has your journey been? And like, what are the learnings, three learnings you would like to share with the audience? Uh, in your uh, journey of being an intern to becoming a sales director. Okay. So I'll say number one is fix whatever you feel is something which you want for yourself and not wait for somebody else to come and fix it for you. It's number one. If I, I would have waited for my seniors or for the company or for the startup to learn and figure it out and then give me the data and stats and the way to improve myself, I would have been waiting for a long period of time because uh, there is so much going on while running the company and uh, you cannot understand what exactly is lacking at which part of the department. So if you are feeling that something is wrong in your own company, if you are a founder, if you are an employee, whatever you are, if you are able to figure out some leakages or some uh, you know, fuck-ups or some un process things just fix it just try to figure out a way to fix it and just fix it for everybody else not just you so find out opportunities on where you can fix things without even when no one is looking when no one is asking to do it that's number one number two is that always having the intent to help people even more than what you are trying to get from so I uh, you know Always try to help people in a way, even if I'm not getting something out of it. I try to give value. I try to share whatever I do. And even if I'm on a sales call and I feel that somebody is uh, wanting some help, but I'm and they're not fit for the product, I just speak for them to them for some period of time and then share some value and just tell them that I'm sorry for your wasting your time, but this is not something that is uh, suiting to your needs and. This is not something that suits best for you. And uh, I just hang the call. So mis-selling someone something without giving them value or without understanding is something uh, people should not do. And third is just keep having that to, to grow. Wherever you are, just don't stay at the same place. A lot of people want comfort. 
I just feel that uh, it's good to have comfort, but still you you need to look for ways and opportunities to keep growing every single All right. So these are interesting learning that you have. I, I really like the first one you mentioned that fix the things before uh, you look for someone to come and fix it for you. And even if you find some bug somewhere at the authority, so you can go on telling to the concerned person that this is the bug that is happening and this can be fixed this way. So what exactly you are trying to say is that you got to have that high self-esteem and uh, conviction on what and not only evidence then tell them that this this will fix that way not only that fixing it and then telling it that i have fixed it this way and we can give it to they give this playbook or fixed playbook to everybody else to get help from right that's that's really interesting so i really would like to uh, say thanks to the audience who has been listening to us over here and uh, coming again over and again on this podcast and listening to the amazing guests just like Pushkar over here and implementing it in your business and uh, exploring more, expanding more your business and I would like to say thank to the guest as well. Thank you Pushkar for being over here. Thank you so much. Trust Trust me. me, the guest that I have interviewed so far, this was one of the best podcast because there I used to ask because I used to interview the founder and CEOs of the company uh, who are hitting over 100 million dollar 500 million dollar but communicating with someone who is a sales director I I believe I've never asked in this podcast how much revenue did you make what I really like the idea is that how did you being an intern working for a startup for absolutely free to become a sales director, what it exactly changed because the company that you have been working for, I, I know that company closely, yeah. so that startup closely. So I really like the idea and I thought this guy must have to be on my show sharing the insights with the audience. And I firmly believe the audience is going to say that this podcast has been one of the valuable podcasts so far. Thank you so much. I hope this helps a lot of people. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for uh, being a valuable guest at Rising Beats. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for having me.